results. So for a distribution that was normal, that was the first condition, uh, significant ANOVAs equaled 5.14, which is equal to the alpha rate of 0 0.05. It's very, very close to what you would expect with an alpha of 0 0.05. Now in the rectangular distribution, which had a decent amount of kurtosis but not skew, the alpha, uh, the number of significant ANOVAs was equal to 5.26. And now for the important exponential distribution, which had really bad skew and pretty bad kurtosis, the num percentage of ANOVAs that were significant was equal to 4.72. So you would conclude that the ANOVA is robust even when you have data that have skew of 2 and kurtosis of 9 because it falls within the range of 0 0.04 and 0 0.06. In fact, it's quite a trivial difference from 5%, which is the theoretical uh, percentage you would expect to see. It's equal to 4.72. That's totally fine. So in practice, we would conclude that t-tests and ANOVA are robust to non-normal distributions. Uh, it's not common that you find distributions even more non-normal than 2 and 9 uh, in practice. So you should be running t-tests and ANOVAs uh, on, on non-normally distributed data. And there's no need to transform scores. I see so many people log base 10 transforming their data and it's usually for no, no reason whatsoever. The t-test and ANOVA will work uh, based on those non-transformed scores. Uh, and the advantage of not transforming your scores is that you can infer your results to the real data and your conclusions are made uh, about the raw data that you get from your tests, not from some fictional transformed data. And of course, a lot of people use non-parametric statistics and oftentimes you lose power and you also lose your inferential capability uh, with respect to nature. So rank, usually we're not interested in rank data. We're interested in the raw data that we get from nature. We want to stay as close to that as possible. And we can do that with the t-test and ANOVA. So long as skew is less than 2 and 9 would be the rule based on Schmidt, Schmider, Schmider et al's uh, study. Now what about homogeneity of variance? That's another topic. Uh, and these tests are relatively robust to that, but the story is a little more complicated, and I'll make a video on that topic uh, in the future, in the near future. So something I'll end on is, back in uh, 1960, uh, Bonneau was doing simulation research on the robustness of the t-test, and he found that it was actually quite robust across the variety of non-normal distribution conditions he looked at, and he had, sim he had reviewed a lot of research, not a lot, but several papers, that had looked at this question even before him. And he concluded that uh, the conclusion that we should use the t-test and ANOVA on non-normally distributed data is unheeded. And he said this conclusion has apparently had surprisingly little effect upon the statistical habits of research workers, as is evident from the increasing reliance upon the less powerful non-parametric techniques in published reports. This is back in 1960. And I think there's a little bit of movement in terms of people realizing that these tests are robust, but there's really not nearly enough uh, based on the quite substantial amount of simulation research that's accumulated over the years. So here are some references to uh, the argument that the t-test and ANOVA are robust to non-normally distributed data. So Bono back in 1960 uh, reviewed the research to date and also did his own simulation, published his research in Psychological Bulletin, Poston has done several papers, extensive ones, uh, and a good one is 1984, where he uh, tabulated a bunch of the alpha, the, um, the robustness across a number of conditions. And in contrast to Schmider et al., he actually looked at sample sizes as low as five, instead of just 25. And overall, it's uh, the robustness uh, applies. It's true that the robustness increases as sample size increases. And Poston suggests that a sample size of 15 uh, is totally fine for the t-test and ANOVA. And he couldn't find a distribution where you would uh, have an alpha rate that was uh, beyond 0 0.05 or you know beyond 0 0.06 in terms of robustness. And Schmieder et al.'s paper, uh, which was published more recently in, and uh, I looked at effect sizes. In addition to the null hypothesis, they simulated data where the population had differences in the group means, and it was still robust even in those cases. 
And so the, all three of these papers, and there are other papers, you should look at papers that are cited in them and uh, papers that have since cited these papers. Uh, but I think the convergence of the conclusion very much is that this skew of two and kurtosis of nine, I think, is a good rule to follow in this context. And I hope you do that, uh, use that rule in your own research rather than testing these distributions and thinking you have to change something or use a different statistic. I'll catch you next time. I hope you enjoyed this video.